Robotic surgery is truly a tele-operation of a surgical robotic system and uh, so surgeon actually sits remotely away from the patient and uh, looking at a 3D monitor with a high definition magnified view and with the hand and foot controls we are controlling the robotic arms and the instruments. So these instruments go into the patient's body through very tiny incisions. So it's a, actually a computer assistant. So one should not understand that the robot is doing anything on its own, like we see picking up a car part and placing it. So essentially it's a tool in surgeon's hand and surgeon completely operates it. So surgeon is always in full control of the machine. And one of the benefits of the robotic surgery is that very complex operation, which normally will require either large incisions associated with a lot of trauma, longer recovery period, longer hospitalization, or laparoscopic surgery, which can be done through small incision, but not all operations can be actually done with the laparoscopic approaches also. So robotic technology has certain attributes, technology attributes that are very beneficial in terms for surgeon to carry out the task. So first is the magnified view. Secondly, the endo wristed instruments or instruments that behave like human wrist. So we are able to literally perform the tasks which are complex as if we are using our own hands. And the bigger thing is that also it filters any tremors or any unintentional motions. So what it translates into firstly, to be able to do complex operation through small incision, which are very precise actually in terms of the surgical task because of the technology attribute. As far as the patient is concerned, it translates into less trauma, less pain, less blood loss, less complications, and patients stay in the hospital much shorter, go home sooner, and get back to their functional status much, much sooner. I wanted to uh, come to India to launch robotic programs. And I've been associated with India. I did the first ever case back in 2002 in India, a robotic cardiac case, and then trained a lot of teams. So when I left United States to come to launch programs, one of the biggest thing I saw that the cost was a major factor. And although in United States, it was never a problem because the insurance covered. And uh, also at that time when I came, there was only one company and they were enjoying monopoly. And essentially it was economy and country centric. So countries like India and many other parts of the world did not have access to this wonderful technology. And the way I looked at it, the healthcare system and benefits should not be tied to the economic status either of the person or of the country. So I really made it my mission in 2012 to really develop a system that will not only be different, hopefully with more and better features, would have more applications, but at the same time be very cost effective. So essentially that took me onto a very committed journey with a vision that to change the direction of surgery by creating a surgical robotic system that will be affordable, not only just for countries like India, but so many economies around the world. So when we look at the current landscape of robotics in India, we have a population almost 1.4 billion people in the country. We have over 70,000 hospitals. And today we have less than 100 robotic systems. So what that means is that hospitals do not have access, doctors do not have access, and even those Physicians really want to stay current with the latest and the best and the hospitals also, but the cost always has been prohibitive and ultimately it translated that the patients in India just could not get the same level of care because of the expense. So not only this part is true for India, but many other countries. So when we translate further into the global landscape, uh, almost 93% of the robotic systems today are between United States, Europe, and Japan. 
So that means rest of the world with over 6 billion population have less than 7% penetration. If you take India, it is less than almost 1.5%. And when we look at the number of procedures that currently are done with these roughly 100 systems, it's around 10,000 only compared to the global procedures of almost 1.5 million. So it is again less than 1%. So when we looked at the system that this is very expensive, the existing technologies, and how the patients are not getting the benefit, how surgeons cannot advance their skill level to offer the least invasive approaches. So basically I made this commitment as a mission to really develop a system and this is where SSI or SS Innovations was born. And the whole idea was to develop a system that will be technologically different. Hopefully it will be superior. One of the visions of SSI is to really truly decentralize excellence. And that is by bringing the highest level care to everyone around the country. And because this problem exists actually globally, whether you take African continent or even in uh, developed countries like United States, you have population that is in smaller communities and they just don't have access. They again have to travel. So I think uh, traveling for medical care it's a very burdensome, actually, issue. And uh, not only it is a serious inconvenience, there are financial strains that occur and then follow up, etc. So I think if we can really take the care, and I think it is possible now with the current technologies that are available, high-speed fiber communication, as well as upcoming 5G, whereby the speeds will be huge and everything can be literally done in real time. All this is feasible, and I think in future, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all the virtual metaverse that is upcoming, all of those things will really absolutely change the direction, not only how we do things, but how we train people. So how we educate people in relation to the healthcare. So I think we need to, of course, we use the technology, robotic is an initial platform, but the vision of SSI is far reaching to truly change the direction how medicine will work in future. So speaking about uh, what we call SSI mantra system, and mantra is a Sanskrit word, which means power. And uh, so, you know, the entire mantra system has been developed by a team in India. So it is designed, uh, all hardware parts and plastic parts are manufactured in India. We do import certain electronics still from our side, but hopefully that will change in time to come. And the idea was to really have a make in India system. And we at times say they're designed by Indians made in India for the world and the system technologically is different than other technologies so first of all we have a surgeon command center whereby the surgeon sits uh, is an open face console with a large 3d monitor and also very large 2d monitor whereby we can bring all kinds of patient information so larger the monitor it provides more magnification and that way we can do these various fine and precise surgical tasks very, very well. And uh, then the foot controls and the head controls are right in front of you. So you are really looking at everything. And also we have a very sophisticated software that brings out the real-time image of our patient side robotic arms. So it is right in front of me on the screen if I'm concerned about if the arms are too close or something. So these are some of the technology advantages. We have a built-in safety with a head tracking camera. So if I don't look at the monitor, even though my hands may be moving, uh, the system will not respond. Uh, then we have a vision card which gives the 3D monitor vision to the entire table side. So the assisting team or people who are observing to learn, they have same view exactly as the surgeon on a large 32 inch 3D monitor. Uh, we also have built in recording and playback capabilities and also live streaming. So one of our goal is to utilize this platform for tele-mentoring. Uh, because this is one of the major problems as we are launching programs in training. 
So not only we can use the platform and with combined with metaverse and literally at some point surgeon will be projected in the operating room as a hologram. All that is I think in the pipeline. So we can utilize these platforms for proctoring people. Secondly, our robotic arms are mounted separately on each cart. So we call this a modular robotic patient side system. So we have ability between three to five arms. So because of the modular design, so certain procedures can actually be done with three arms. So it is economic as far as certain hospitals are concerned. If they are not doing very complex operation, they can still do the robotic procedures and offer the benefits with three arms. The standard system will have four robotic arms. And, uh, and then for certain specialized application like cardiac uh, operations or certain uh, where you have to use enabling technology. So use of fifth arm will allow us to be able to uh, carry out these tasks. In fact, our Surgeon Command Center, and we are the only one in the world that has thought this, and we have right from the beginning, uh, ability to control five arms from the Surgeon Command Center. So essentially, you can literally automate a lot of things. So also, I think as we move forward, uh, Things will continue to improve in terms of the enabling technology. I think uh, one of the things that I see, computer vision, uh, you see beyond what you actually see. So a lot of these things will get incorporated. And one of the things that our team already has developed is holograms. So we can actually take a, a scan, 3D, uh, either CAT scan or an MRI. And we can literally create the hologram of the specific organ of that particular patient. And we can superimpose it onto the operative field. So you literally, you see everything with the hologram. You can rotate it, cut through, see inside. So what it will do, it will not only translate into very uh, good vision in terms of what is happening that you normally don't see with the camera system, but also provide quality outcomes. So if you have a tumor and you want to save part of the kidney, so you know exactly where to cut. So we are really looking at not only, uh, you know, utilizing a different system with more abilities, but how can we enhance surgeons' abilities to be able to perform these operations. The current robotic system that have been existing, and especially one company that has uh, started out and pretty much enjoyed monopoly for over 20 plus years, the system has been very expensive. So if you take in the Indian rupees context, it is somewhere the top model is like 15 to 18 crores. And even the next model is somewhere, you know, over 10 to 11 crores. Uh, and uh, the instruments are expensive, the maintenance contracts are expensive. So essentially, the whole goal of SSI was to create a system that will be cost-effective while maintaining the quality, hopefully better features, and more application. So I'm really happy that at SSI, we are able to achieve the cost-effectiveness one, because being in India, it makes it easier and cheaper. Secondly, also, uh, we have not compromised at all in terms of its ability. Performance will be very similar to the existing technologies and hopefully better with more application, more enabling technologies, etc. So our projected costs would be somewhere like one third that of the existing uh, companies. Uh, and I think what it will do, it will make it affordable. And one of our goal, apart from our very routine and standard training model, is to place these in medical colleges. So India has the largest number of medical colleges in the world. And as laparoscopic surgeons today come out trained with laparoscopic surgery ability, we hope that the robotic surgery will become part of a postgraduate curriculum. And so this way we literally create a pool of surgeons that are coming out trained. And with that, you'll have a trained staff also because robotic surgery is a teamwork. So surgeon is sitting away, then you have a table side team. So it becomes very crucial that the table side team also is equally trained in parallel. So if you introduce this into the hospitals and into the medical colleges, we'll create a pool. And then when they come out, we give them 
a cost effective system so i think gradually it will change and i think india truly has an opportunity to become a global leader because of our population base because of the tremendous enthusiasm among surgeons to adopt the latest and the best technologies hospitals are always looking for better technologies and if the price is close to an mri or a ct scan is very affordable and patients of course would love to have less invasive operations nobody wants a major operation with long recoveries more trauma pain etc so i think this way we have been able to achieve uh, in relation to the economic advantage without compromising any quality or the performance with our ssi technologies and related to robotics and other development that we've done we have used sanskrit names one because of the system has been developed in india and india has a huge long history and these sanskrit name all of them have got very deep meanings so we have named our robotic system as ssi mantra then we have the instrument that behave like human wrist so we have used the word mudra because all the various dance poses are called mudras so they be, you know the human wrist basically is in all different poses and then we also have developed a automated anastomotic connector which joins two arteries automatically literally with a push of button uh, which will absolutely revolutionize field of bypass surgery so we have called that nadi nadi that connects the two things and finally the metaverse the virtual reality uh we have used ssi maya so maya is considered you know uh, illusory uh, you know so virtual is actually non existent but it is seen so we have termed this thing maya signifying that it is and it is not also <laughs> <laughs>